Combat chaplains wear uniforms but carry no weapons, and their service can involve the ultimate sacrifice. For nearly 250 years, in every battle throughout our nation's history, they've been there, quietly supporting soldiers while bullets flew by. Perhaps more than any other profession, diversity is their unique and inspirational strength because while they may be Catholic, Jewish, Muslim, or Buddhist, they are on the front lines of combat and they support and stand up for all soldiers of all faiths. And their story is being told in a new and inspiring documentary film called Fighting Spirit, A Combat Chaplain's Journey. And executive producer Rich Hall and retired U.S. Army chaplain Jeff Struker, both of course featured in the film, are with us now. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Uh, thank you for doing this. I mean, just being able to gear up towards Veterans Day and put a light on something we haven't talked about. It sounds like this was both so important for you, Rich, as an executive producer. And then, of course, we'll get Jeff's take in just a moment. I mean, what drew you to this story? Well, it's been a four year journey for me, uh, which is quite a long one. I wasn't even aware that combat chaplains existed as a profession. And so as I learned about it, I thought, man, these are stories that need to be told. And the challenge is that combat chaplains don't like to tell their story. They like the spotlight to be on the soldiers who they believe are the real heroes. And so I was aware of Jeff Strucker's story from the movie Black Hawk Down, which portrayed him. I reached out to my friend Chris Pratt and said, I feel like there's some stories that we need to highlight here. And then people just kept saying yes and yes and yes. And it kind of took on a life of its own. And we partnered with the U.S. Army Chaplain Corps, who helped us get access to some of the stories that had never been told before. And ultimately, that journey ends for us when the movie's available in theaters for Veterans Day. And I'm so glad we're talking about this. I mean, first off, you know, just to be able to thank you for your service, Chaplain, and then being able to share your story in this unique way. It's some, it is a group of people that we don't often talk about. I've gotten to know my chaplain at my daughter's school. And, and just to be able to see the impact, I can't imagine the impact you've been able to have. Talk about your role a little bit and why it was important to you to say yes to this film. Well, chaplains are pretty amazing people, but very few people in history know about chaplains. They've been around the U.S. since before our country was officially founded. And on every battlefield, in the teeth of the fight, there have been chaplains. And most of them have been there in the blood and guts without a weapon. And I was just glad to be asked to be a small part of the story so that the audience would go away aware of military chaplains maybe for the first time, or for those who were aware of it, finally able to get some um, education about these guys and gals and what they do for our country. And I know there's a, a special key I want to talk with you about when the remains of prisoner of war and Army combat chaplain Emily Kaufman, I hope I'm saying that correctly, talk about the role again with her remains being found and why that was a point important to be able to share with people and have people really understand their take. You're, you're right. It, uh, so it was uh, Father Emil Capon, who was a Catholic priest and a former Army combat chaplain. He died in a prisoner of war camp in Korea 70 years ago. And we didn't even intend to tell his story. We were about halfway done with the movie and his remains were identified. They were brought back to the U.S. And we thought, hmm, I wonder if we should go send a camera crew there. And we ended up taking my partner who co-directed this movie with me, Justin Roberts, who's a former um, Army combat chaplain. And we sent him on the road. And he went and he shot the funeral and it turned out to be this giant event. We thought no one would show up and the entire town of Wichita, Kansas shut down to celebrate not just this single chaplain, but all combat chaplains. And I think that's really where the movie found its heartbeat. When you make documentaries, the at the beginning you make a plan and the only thing you know about the plan is that it's gonna be wrong. And this one really took a left turn when Father Capon's remains were identified. and. If you know anything about the Catholic Church and the military, they know how to put on a good show. And so it really gave us a lot of inspiration. And I think it really tied the movie together. Well, we've only got a little bit of time. I do want to end, though, by talking with the chaplain one last time. To be able to share your story and have the spotlight put on chaplains, I would feel it's safe to say that it changes you when you are out in the field, when you are enduring the things that a soldier will do, but unarmed. What would you like people out there to know about your role and other chaplains around the world? 
Well, war will change you. It's supposed to change you. And I hope this Veterans Day weekend, when they go to the theaters and watch this film, audiences go away moved. So moved that they reach out to somebody who served, maybe even somebody who served alongside a military chaplain and just simply say thank you. That is payment enough to the guys and gals who serve our country. And I know we've touched on, I just want to point out, it's the first ever co-production between Hollywood and the U.S. Army Chaplain Corps. So important, out on Veterans Day. Gentlemen, thank you for doing this film. Uh, we appreciate your time today as well. Great to be with you. Thank you.